Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. So on this week's video, I am going to be doing some more DIY project with thrifted finds that I know I had in my stash, but I'm excited that spring finally feels like it's in the air and I'm ready to get some spring both in my home and in my booth. And with Easter coming, I have a fun project that I'm keeping for myself today. So if you want to see what I did this week, stick around. For project number one today, I have been using these shelves down in my basement for some of my finished items. They are Ethan Allen, uh, but as you can see, they're in pretty rough shape. I got them for $15 a piece and then used 25% off coupon back at the place, my favorite thrift store. So the first thing I thought was let's just kind of sand the top of these. I kind of wanted to do a two-tone look, but I didn't know if the wood on the top was going to cooperate or not. So I went over the top of these with 120 grit sandpaper, and it was sanding very well and getting rid of a lot of the scuffs and watermarks. So I continued on that um, and did a 220 grit now you can see the difference between what it used to look like and what it looks like right now so i did a 220 grit sandpaper on the top so that it is soft to the touch and then i decided to move on to some of the cracks that were in the bottom of this from some water damage i was going to get some wood putty and mix it together but i happen to have this wood filler out and you can see that there was water damage on the bottom and then there were a lot of scratches on just some spaces. So I went over this, excuse my angle, I did not have my tripod with me in my garage, but I basically put this wood putty, putty on here and let it dry really well and then sanded it back down and it is basically um, paintable technically it's stainable as well but I'm not staining here I'm just painting so um, yeah basically I shook that can of paint and did not realize that the top was on but it was water soluble wiped right up I did one solid coat of paint on here but forgot to put any salvation solution on it and it did bleed through just a little bit so no harm i just salvation solutioned the other spaces where it was like the the raw wood that's where the bleeding was happening and then for the one i'd already painted i just went over those spaces with this and that worked out really really well um, if you guys have any type of a shellac um, that would also work but as you can see um one coat of paint did not do the coverage i tried after two coats just to do a little wet distressing to see if i like the look of it i did not so i did another third coat but i am liking the look of the wet distressing especially with keeping the top of this raw wood you can see where i got some paint on the raw wood all i did was really really soak the rag down and um, could wipe that right off of there I wanted the inside back to be super distressed because it had this kind of paneled look to it. I tried the sander but decided to go with a really wet rag. I figured these would be filled up with things once they got to their end user and it would be nice to have kind of an interesting, very distressed background in the back. I then went over the both the wood and the painted surface with DIY's Big Top to seal the wood in and the paint in and I'm really happy to get this into my booth.
I got this really cool oval basket for pretty cheap at the thrift store um, and realized there was some staining on here. So I went over that with Salvation Solution just thinking that, you know what, why don't I try painting in this space, but I wanted it to all take it evenly. So I went over, over this section with Salvation Solution, just went over the whole thing because I figured there's a lot of tannins in this basket and I did not want the color to bleed through. So I started with that and then I got out DIY paint in the color French Millinery and I think this is so beautiful. I contemplated just staying with painting the center section this beautiful lavender gray purple and maybe even doing like that uh, like a white circle in the middle um, but I went with my original plan because I've always wanted to try a transfer over a basket and this weave was very close together and my goal was to kind of make this um, clay base paint a little bit thick so that it gave the transfer something to grab onto so I did two coats of French millinery I went over it with big top again I wanted to give the transfer more chance to grab onto something so I sealed it in I was okay with it being thick I did leave it overnight nope actually all day to dry and then this transfer is one of the last transfers I have from the Brocante transfer book from IOD. It is by far my very favorite transfer they have ever done. I happen to have another full transfer book in my possession, but I have not opened it because I have not finished this one yet. So I am going over this with Big Talk. Um, I do end up regretting that part, but I can fix it. Do you see how shiny it made it? Um, was not liking how it was over the basket. So I kind of went through and pressed it down. I'm like, okay, how do I distress it? I tried to add some dark wax and then I was like, wait a second, let's just do some white wax over the whole thing. And the benefit of that is it did help the transfer kind of push down in between the weaves. And I, I get that it made it a little bit, um, I don't know, old looking, right? But with a transfer as big as this flower was, it, it was either going to have to break a little bit or look like it's sitting on top of it. So I went over it with white wax. I wiped it back a little bit. And then I did grab some dark wax and made the picture look a little bit aged and I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I know I, I say that a lot, but like this one, I really had no idea if it would work or not. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think this was a hit or a miss? All right, so this next bunny has been just staring at me for about three weeks. I looked through my footage. I just knew I had a before picture of him, but he was 99 cents. He was covered in like this crazy old looking ivy that didn't even match like how cute this little moss bunny is. And he also had a really good um, bird's nest with three really cool eggs on his lap. And I took it all out, already used the, the eggs nest and thought, how can I still use him? I didn't want to try to re-moss him because I really liked what the coloring of his moss. There were just some spots that I had kind of dug some stuff out. So I decided let's make him sus some suspenders and I really looked at all the places that really needed to be covered and thought maybe some suspenders will work. 
But then when I saw that he needed to have a big space near his ear covered, I decided to change him to a her so she could have some little hair flowers up there. So um, one of my viewers, sweet, sweet viewer Lissy, gave me a huge bag full of these gorgeous neutral solo wood flowers and they are looking beautiful in this jar on my um my hutch in the create room or in my studio but i was like how can i add these little flowers to these spaces and make this cute little bunny adorable so i was like you know what since it's a girl let's just turn these suspenders into a little apron so this is just drop cloth I use an IOD stamp at the top and just hot glue all these pieces together for this sweet little darling lady buddy rabbit. Let me know guys, do you love this as much as I do? This one is staying with me. It totally fits my neutral spring decor and um, my daughters are already in love with it. So I'm not gonna be selling this one, but I just wanted to give you an idea for um, how to transform the form of a bunny in a different way. The next project is going to be a relatively simple one. Um, in the past, I have done stamps, then paint, then stamps um, for birds, and those have all sold in my booth. So I went through my stash, and I have these really cool looking picture frames that I got for $2 a piece. I went to my little handy dandy book that I have been using and picked the birds that I thought would look best on each one, stamped the birds straight on here with the stays on permanent ink in the color jet black. And you know what? I didn't in the other ones, I would paint right now over the stamp and then re-stamp it. But I kind of like the way these looked right here. They were a little bit different. They're simple and they went perfectly with the picture frames what do you guys think my bird pictures are selling i needed to make some more So for my last project today, I tried selling these little mugs that I had bought. I wanted to say I spent 50 cents a piece. I thought they were cute and springy and they were in my booth for a very long time as a set. Did not sell. So today I am going to make cute little mugs. You know how for Christmas we did tree mugs? Well, I thought it'd be fun to do a little um, spring mug with these little birdhouse wooden pieces I got thrifting. So I'm using, I was gonna use this floral and then I said, no, I do not like that. I just don't like that floral. Just need to like donate it because I don't wanna do anything with it. Anyway, so I decided to get out my wood flowers again instead of the floral that I thought looked awful. And so I did some foam some moss was going to try to do a mixture of eggs um, in there and I was like you know what this is just too confusing so I ended up doing three of the wooden flowers in each mug and I'm going to paint each of these cute little wooden birdhouses a different color um, with DIY paint and I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the process. I think they turned out really cute. <laughs> 
let me know in the comments below what you think of these. So what did you guys think about today's project? Was that cute little bunny not just so precious? He is going to be in my front hallway um, for not just for Easter. I feel like he can stay out for like all of the spring until summer comes around. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was, if you got inspired to make any for yourself, because quite honestly, that's why I do this is because I want to encourage you guys to get out there and make some stuff, be creative, get those creative juices flowing and add creativity and making things into your daily life. Now, um, a couple questions that have been coming up lately. Um, I do sell DIY paint in my store at Angry Mamas in Cumming, Georgia. I am in the process are trying to get my website up and running. And guys, it is just like, you get it almost done and then you're like, oh my gosh, there's sales tax in different states. There's all kinds of things you've got to do. So I am working on getting the DIY paint up and getting my website up. That is one of my main goals for the first part of this year. The second thing I get asked a lot, I do use a lot of IOD products. Guys, I really love their quality, their designs. I do not sell it yet. 
there is somebody that sells it already at Angry Mamas. So my option is to sell it online and I would be able to sell it to you guys. But again, gotta get the website going. So right now, um, you cannot buy um, IOD products from me. So if you don't have a local stockist, I will. I would like to send you over to my friend Sonnet at sonnetsgardenblooms.com. She has every IOD product that there is and I really stand behind the quality and the design of those products. Hopefully I will be able to make the investment maybe towards the end of this year if everything keeps going well um, to add that to my lineup. But I need to go ahead and get what I already have, this DIY paint up on um, my website. So hopefully we'll get that moving forward here soon. And guys, there's sometimes it feels like there's just enough, not enough hours in the day. I do have three kids. It is time for all the spring concerts and all those kinds of things. So mom has been busy in a great way. I had a great time at the mountains with my friend last weekend. Her parents have a mountain home and they're about to come back from Florida. So she's like, let's get more, one more weekend in. And I complied. And let me tell you, we got to be out in nature and some of the fun things that I got to see. I shared that over on my Facebook page, but one of my favorite things you guys made a lot of comments about my nail color. Um, clearly, I have a color scheme, but one of my favorite things that I found is this picture right here of this mossy tree and part of the moss color is this beautiful apothecary um, farm fresh color that I love so much. And that was just so fun to see in nature and the fact that it happens to be shaped like a heart, pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm going to stop with the rambling. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel and helping this grow um, so that I can invest in some things like an IOD in the product line. Um, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite was. And guys, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thanks for watching.